Thanks, Chrissy, and uh, thank you, Vertical Events and Canaccord, for the opportunity to present. So, as Chrissy mentioned, uh, Bright Star is a West Australian gold producer, uh, currently a gold producer, but a gold developer and explorer. Um, we're doing things a little bit differently at the moment. Um, we are currently in a mining operation and a joint venture down our Menzies Gold Project, which I'll elaborate on in, a, in an endeavour to try and organically fund a lot of our working capital and, and the, I suppose, the, the reduce the need to, to continue to tap the market in, in dilutionary equity raisings. Uh, and fortunately for us, as Chris touched on, we do have our own processing infrastructure and a significant resource base. So for us, we can, have, uh, we can position ourselves for a low capital restart. We've had a scoping study come out last month and we're working through feasibility studies at the moment. So really looking at a low capital restart for gold operations. We're currently mining to help organically fund some of that and you know, the team's really busy. So I'll just walk you guys through the story. So this is where we are. So uh, on the map on the right hand side, we do have the, the Laverton Gold Project up here where we've got uh, half a million ounces and our processing plant just south of Laverton. And we're located also down at the Menzies Gold Project where we're currently mining. So a total chalk resource of a bit over a million ounces at one and a half grams per tonne. Um, we are in a fantastic jurisdiction. We've got awesome infrastructure. You know, at Menzies, you can hit a pitching wedge in, from our project and you'll be on the Goldfields Highway, sealed highway all the way through to our project area at Laverton, great haul roads. You've got everything you want from a mining operation. We've got infrastructure in place. We've got roads, the network's all there. You know, West Australia is probably the best place to build a gold mine. Uh, in terms of our scoping study that we just released, uh, this was on the back of a merger that we completed in May with a company called King West Resources. So they had the Menzies Gold Project. This study was essentially a snapshot in time of more, more or less articulating the development plan for, for the project. And what it showed was that we would sequentially mine Menzies first and then Laverton. Uh, that saw a mine plan of over 320,000 ounces over an initial eight years, so circa 40,000 ounces per annum. Importantly for us, the key thing we focused on and do look at is this low capital up, um, upfront cost to get back into production. We're all probably acutely aware as investors in the room that the equity capital markets are, are pretty tough. Gold is even tougher, you know, there's no sexy battery materials here. Um, so, you know, generating that, that equity market goodwill with the ability to raise, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to build a brand new mill is very difficult and, in my opinion, quite prohibitive in the next few years. Similarly, the debt markets are also very tough. Um, you know, the market hasn't had a good experience in backing single asset gold developers in Western Australia in the last five years. So, we are wearing, I suppose, some of those. those um, those scars. So what we're trying to do is have a low capital upfront up cost. So for $22 million, that gets us into production. Um, the, uh, the, the financials speak for themselves. You know, at current spot, the IRR is over 100%. Uh, I think at current spot, the EBITDA profile is over $200 million. Um, we are trading at about a 20 mil market cap. You know, we, are, we feel like that valuation is extremely undemanding. As Chrissy touched on, we did have an independent valuation on the replacement cost of the plant which valued at over $60 million. So we've got infrastructure in place, we've got a million ounces of gold, we've got a scoping study that says this is fundable and it works, and what we're doing now is just optimising it, making it better and expanding upon that. Um, the scoping study had about 30% of our current resource profile in the mining inventory, so we are currently working on, uh, on, on some infill drilling in, in, in various parts of the deposits to try and bring a lot more of that resource base that we've already got uh, into that mine plan in addition to extensional resource drilling as well. Um, touching on the mining operations that we do have underway, so this is a 50-50 mining joint venture. Our joint venture partner is extremely experienced. They're wearing all the working capital costs, they've got all the equipment and gear, they're doing it themselves, and we split the, pro we, um, split the profits 50-50. So that's a, a relatively modest mining campaign. That completes in, uh, in February of next year where we'll be toll treating that dirt through uh, Genesis Minerals Gualia Mill up in Leonora. Um, we are assessing opportunities at the moment for a, a Selkirk 2.0, so looking at other small scale operation potential to again to contribute to organically fund um, the, the, the working capital of the business. Just touching on the corporate overview, uh, a, a circa $20 million market cap. Uh, we raised a little bit of money last quarter, so you know, circa EV of about $17 million. Um, you know, so trading at a relatively undemanding valuation of oops, sorry, around about uh, 17 ounces, uh, $17 per ounce. Um, well incentivised and well aligned, the board and management team own about 8% of the company, um, the top 50 own about 40%. Just touching on some of the, the numbers here, and I won't dive too much into the detail because there's a lot of detail here, but just looking at some of the physicals, um, as I mentioned, um, we're looking at refurbishing our plant to just under half a million tonnes per annum fresh rock throughput. Uh, the C1 cash cost, 17.65, all in sustainings were about $2,000 an ounce. So about a third margins at current spot. 
Um, importantly, we use 2900 for the gold price. The gold price is over $3,000 at the moment, so there's some inherent upside there. Uh, these are the kind of numbers that I look at and I was kind of hyper-focused on throughout the study and really is the return on investment and it really just underpins the why. You know, what are we actually doing? What are we doing? Why? And you know, the mining industry can probably be fairly criticised for not being the most uh, efficient deployment of capital ever. Um, so what we're doing, for every dollar we spend, we get $4.6 back and that is truly sector leading both against our WA developer and explorer peers and also in line with the recent mines that have been built and I'll, and I'll show a slide on that shortly. So that MPV on pre-production capital for me is probably one of the most important um, reflections as to what this project is so valuable for us. That delivers an ultra low capital intensity and a short payback period. So what that enables us for us is you know, we can get clever with things like the financing for this, you know, we're looking for ways in which we can do it, you know, minimising dilution, minimising onerous hedging conditions, and you know, the debt profile, given that short payback period, is something that you know, we're quite comfortable gets funded. This is just the production profile of everything. So um, these yellow and brown bars here, that's the Menzies, so that's the Lady Shenton open pit and the Undega underground. So what we're looking at doing is having two mines at Menzies and two mines at Laverton, one underground and one open pit in each. By sequencing the mine plan such that we have, we can use, you know, we can get the synergies of people, equipment and infrastructure by moving from one operation to the other. Um, the, uh, the mine plan, you know, enables those synergies. It really enables us to minimise that equity dilution and, and, you know, onerous debt conditions. So you can see the dip in the, the net cash flow here is where we're utilising the funds generated, the positive funds generated out of Menzies to fund the refurbishment of our mill in Laverton and also the pre-strip and mining costs up at Laverton. So, We've done this such that the cash generated from Menzies contributes entirely for all the funds required for Laverton. So organically funding the expansion and the, and the continued mine life. Uh, this is just some of the costs and the, and the financial analysis. Um, as you can see, we've split it out in, you know, per ounce and also a unit tonne basis, all in sustaining costs of a nudge over $2,000 an ounce. For us, you know, there are significant opportunities to, to make that a lot sharper throughout the pre-feasibility study and DFS. So, in terms of that, look, we're looking at increasing the throughput further up at, uh, up at Laverton. That you, you, if, if we increase the throughput, you see a commensurate drop in the processing unit costs. Um, the toll treating costs we've assumed at Menzies are extremely robust in the sense that we think there's significant delta in the ability to, to drop that quite significantly by turning around to some of these mills in the district. Um, there are a number, we've got Gualia, Paddington, you know, Davyhurst, Mount Ida, even FMR's mill down at Coolgardie. You know, there's four or five mills in the district that are all interested in third party oil. And so the ability to turn around and say, hey guys, we've got you know, one to two million tonnes over the next two or three years, you, know, you can generally um, um, negotiate a sharper processing rate. Um, so we think there's a real opportunity for that to drop quite significantly. So just going to zoom in the project areas quickly here. Um, this is the town of Menzies. This black line through here is the Goldfields Highway. What we're looking at is having three open pits in the Lady Shenton system here, essentially one large open pit and the underground down at Yandaga. So that's six kilometres apart. You get all the, all the synergies and benefits from having a shared, you know, shared workforce, you know, management oversight and things without stepping on each other's toes. So that's the perfect distance for us to manage from Menzies. Uh, the mine plan says 153,000 ounces produced. Um, just under 100 coming out of the open pit and uh, about 50 to 60 processed and recovered coming out of the underground. I'll just touch on the mine, the mine um, sorry, the production profile, sorry here. So just under 50,000 ounces in the first year and 63 in the second. So it's, it's relatively, that, that enables that sharp payback period. So these are just some snapshots of, of, the, uh, of the open pit shells up at the Lady Shenton system and the underground stopes down at the Undega. Um, I've got a slide to show uh, the opportunity at the Undega, but uh, speaking to it, historically that was mined down to 600 metres in an underground. Um, our, our mine plan goes down to 190 metres. We've got drilling under these under the stopes here that we know we've got unclassified and, and inferred material that sits under there. So we've got every sus suspicion that that's going to continue, you know, significantly at depth. Just turning our focus to the Laverton Gold Project. So just to give everyone a, a bit of awareness, so essentially this is Laverton. It's about 150 odd k's east of Leonora. Um, our project areas are centred across three areas. So we've got the Corktree Well Deposit, which is really the backbone of this business. It's 300,000 ounces in, in open pits. Yeah, it's going to be the base load feed for this plant. Um, you know, there's significant exploration upside there. We think that could be you know, multiple to what that currently is. Um, we've got the Alpha and Beta deposits south of Laverton and the Beta deposit co-located with that Bright Star plant. Uh, 
Uh, we've got haul roads in between all the deposit areas, you know, fantastic infrastructure. We don't have to build anything. I mean, we can't sell a haul road, but we don't have to spend money to put one in. So for us, it's significant assets and, and infrastructure advantages for this business. This is what the Cork Tree Well uh, mineral resource looks like. As you can see, um, it kind of splits in. It has been historically mined in the late 80s by Ostwim. Uh, this is the existing open pit. It goes down about 40 metres, so it's, it's relatively um, you know, neat and tidy. We'll see cutbacks on those two pits and then virgin pits uh, just north of there. So you can see the, you know, something like here, this is the Delta Prospect. You know, it's nudging a two to three gram open pit in oxide. You know, that is, you know, that's free money for us. So that's, that's why we're quite excited to get into that. I'll just touch on the processing plant. So this is uh, up in Laverton. This is what we had the infrastructure valuation as a replacement cost of $60 million. So that's $60 million we don't have to spend. Um, we had Jair Engineering, who are probably the best engineering group in the WA gold space. You know, they've done probably nine out of the 10 gold plants that you could see built in the last decade. We had them do a refurbishment and expansion study. So we did a, a scenario analysis looking essentially at what's, what's the best option, what's the most optimal use of our capital for building this. And what it landed at was about an $18.5 million capital cost for refurbishing it and expanding it modestly up to half a million tonnes per annum fresh. Uh, we are assessing options at the moment to taking that further, looking at second-hand equipment and things like a ball mill and et cetera to try and you know, nudge that up towards a million tonnes, where we think is probably the natural um, sweet spot for in terms of our grade and what we think we can deliver to the mill for a mine life. Um, as I said, there's significant scope here. We think we can be increasing you know, production profile out of that mill by not only increasing the mill, but focusing on, on head grade early on in the mine life, um, extending the mine life. We know this is going to get a lot bigger and really looking at other uh, opportunistic ways, potentially inorganic um, activities m in the district. You know, Laverton is characterised by fragmented junior owners of, um, of ounces, isolated ounces, and you know, access to a, a path to market for a lot of those uh, groups is, is quite attractive. So we're certainly in conversations with a number of those. This is one of the slides I'll touch on that kind of referenced where, us, where we sit from a, a, I suppose, a, a peer comparison perspective. So. It's quite busy, but I'll talk you through it. So this is the MPV on CapEx ratio I discussed. So this is essentially all explorers and developers in WA that have got a study in the market. You know, there's names we all know, Osgold, Rocks, Capricorns, Mount Gibson, Austral, Black Cat, et cetera. And what this looks at is essentially, you know, the return on your investment. Every dollar you spend, what do you look like you can come back? And obviously outlines all the study outputs and assumptions. But what you can see here is, you know, we are head and shoulders above that peer group in terms of what we actually get back for our spend. Um, if we're looking at the producers that are in this space, so Pantoro, Bellevue, Red 5 and Calidus, all got funded and built in the last three or four years, you can see what their metrics look like in terms of you know, a like for like quite similar to what we're presenting. So what that tells me is that we have a project that's got similar return on investment as things that have been funded and built, and we have an arguably a, a stronger return profile than the current suite of, of other um, explorer and developers. Just touching on some of the upside opportunities, Chris is going to start yelling at me soon. So this is where Yundaga was mined down to 600 metres. This is the open pit uh, and the underground development there. As I said, we've got inferred and unclassified material underneath it. We've got drill pierce points underneath that show it's still mineralised economically. So for us, doing infill drilling to, to really grow that at depth is a clear opportunity for us. This is the mining joint venture that's underway. Uh, as I said, we had the, the first blast and mining commenced in late August. Uh, it's on budget and on schedule at the moment. The guys are ripping through it, uh, getting great productivity. You can see that photo was about two days ago. Um, yeah, it's all, all processing, all progressing really well for uh, production and uh, through the Gwalior Mill in uh, February of next year. This is a quick uh, snapshot of the catalysts of what we're looking at doing. So this is from an exploration perspective. And again, this is on our, on our website and released to the ASX, so please go through it. But down here in terms of the studies, we're uh, aspiring to be in a position to have everything permitted and um, studied, completed for a final, final investment decision by the back end of next year. So I'll leave it there. Thank you all.